Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. This is Let's Master English Podcast 60. Thank you so much. My name is Coach Shane, your host, Coach Shane. Country Shane will be joining us a little bit later with an interesting fact. We've got some news. I think the news is a little bit more difficult than last week. I'm not too sure. We've got a bunch of questions. Two questions from our YouTube page and two questions from our live participants. Yeah, I do the news and the Q&A section live. Every Wednesday around 2.30 p.m. Chicago. And it's on our YouTube channel, Coach Shane's ESL. It's also on Periscope, so you can follow me there, at Coach Shane. On Twitter, at Coach Shane. And hopefully in the future, we'll be on Facebook too, live, just for those two sections. So this section is not actually live. I'm recording this section. So, we've got a great show. Uh, also, we have the book club. We are up to the second habit from the seven habits of highly successful people. We're listening to the audio book. This section, habit two, was a long section. It was about two hours long. And you know what? Um, I haven't decided, but I will decide by the end of the podcast. Maybe we'll only talk about half of this habit, uh, the habit number two, begin with the end in mind. I'll decide later on in the podcast. Also, we have an announcement. There is a logo competition. Yep, yeah. we have our Let's Master English logo. I like it. You can see it on the top of our newsletter, on our Twitter page, on our YouTube channel. When you listen to the LME podcast on YouTube, you see the logo. I like that logo. Other people say they like it too. But some people have suggested that maybe we can change. So I'm open to suggestions. If you have an idea for our logo, it better be better than what we have. Uh, I would love to see it. You can send it to logo at letsmasterenglish.com. That's the email address, logo, L-O-G-O, at letsmasterenglish.com. Send it right there and uh, we'll judge. By the end of February, we will decide whether or not to keep our logo or to change our logo. Now, if we do change the winner gets a very nice prize, and the, win the winner will get $100. If we don't change our logo, uh, still people that submit something, maybe I should give them something anyway. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, we have decided if we change, if we choose your logo, we will send you $100. Um, that has to be via PayPal, via PayPal, or if you live in the United States, uh, we can send you a direct deposit also that's absolutely possible so that's really cool stuff a logo competition so lots of stuff in this podcast i hope that you enjoy it enough chit chat let's get into the lme news where education and entertainment come together L -l -l let's master english do it Feeling down? Look up! Researchers at the University of Auckland have concluded that posture may be keeping people down in the dumps. It's long been known that sitting and standing up properly makes positive fe people feel even stronger and more confident. So, researchers were curious to know if it would help with people who were already suffering from depression. It did. Participants in the study were found to be much less self focused, mentally more sharp, less fatigued, and more enthusiastic. Your mom was right. Sit up straight. <laughs> That's the story. Now, I read that 
pretty fast. And I'm guessing it was a little bit difficult uh, for many of you. So let me go ahead and slow down a bit. Listen carefully. Feeling down? Look up. Researchers at the University of Auckland have concluded that posture may be keeping people down in the dumps. It's long been known that sitting and standing up properly makes positive people feel even stronger and more confident. So, researchers were curious to know if it would help with people who were already suffering from depression. It did. Participants in the study were found to be much less self-focused, mentally more sharp, less fatigued, and more enthusiastic. Your mom was right. Sit up straight. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a good story. So, yeah. Um, lots of people, you know, they, they sometimes they feel sad, they feel depressed, they're anxious, they're worried about things. That's not nice. It's, um, it's, it's a sad situation. And uh, what can you do? What can you do? Well, one thing that you can do is look up. Feeling down? Look up. That's the title of the story. Are you feeling down? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling worried? If you are, then look up. Feeling down, look up. What? what is, that's the title. What is the story? Let's go into it. Researchers. So these are scientists. We can assume scientists, PhDs, masters, students, scientists, researchers at the University of Auckland. University of Auckland. Ah, Auckland, New Zealand. A-U-C-K-L-A-N-D, Auckland, the University of Auckland. So scientists at the University of Auckland have concluded, have concluded. Okay, so that means they did some research and at the end of the research, they have a conclusion. They have an answer. They, so research, the idea of research, you start with a question, you study, 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 and then you find the answer or the conclusion. So researchers at the University of Auckland have concluded, they have an answer, that posture, posture, P-O-S, T-U-R-E. Posture. How you sit or how you stand. Do you sit straight or do you sit bent over with your head down, your shoulders in? Are your shoulders back? Is your head up? If your posture is good, then your back is straight, your shoulders are back, your head is up. Not too high, but it's your head is up. This is the idea of posture. So these researchers have concluded that posture may be, two words, might be, could be, is possibly keeping people down in the dumps. To be down in the dumps, that's an idiom, and it means depressed, sad, worried. So scientists at the University of Auckland have concluded that a person's posture might be the reason they're sad. Yeah, they're down in the dumps. They're sad. Wow, interesting research. So let's continue. It has long been known. It's long been known. It has long been known. We have known for a long time. Scientists have known for a long time that sitting and standing up properly, sitting up properly, standing up properly, makes positive people feel even stronger and more confident. So some people are always positive. They're always happy. 
And when happy people, positive people, when they sit up straight or when they stand up straight, they feel even happier. They feel stronger. They feel more confident. And scientists knew that. They knew that. That's old information. So researchers were curious to know. Researchers wanted to know if sitting up straight, standing up straight, it would help with people who were already suffering from depression. People who are already depressed, people who are negative, people who are sad, people who are worried, people who have depression. If these people who already have depression, if they sat up straight or stood up straight, would that posture help those people? With positive people, it makes them stronger. With sad people, would it make them happy? It did. Yes. Changing the person's posture absolutely helped those people. Participants. And these are the people the scientists study. So the scientists are studying people, and those people are the participants. Participants in the study were found to be much less focused. So a participant who is depressed, when somebody is depressed, when somebody is sad, when somebody is worried, those people focus a lot on themselves. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so worried. What's going to happen? What about me? Oh, oh, oh. They're very focused on themselves, and that's not so good. By changing their posture, believe it or not, people were less focused on themselves. People were much less self-focused. People were mentally more sharp. They could think better. They could think more clearly. They could do math in their head better. They could remember things better. They could talk more clearly by changing their posture. People who had good posture were less fatigued. Fatigued. F-A-T-I G-U-E-D. Less tired. People who changed their posture had more energy. They were less fatigued. And people who had good posture were more enthusiastic. They were happier. They were more positive. Your mom was right. Your mother was right. Sit up straight. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, and I was at the dinner table, and I would eat my dinner like this, my mom would say, hey, sit up straight. And I have to, you know, bring my back back and, and sit up and eat straight. Or the, the teachers at school, don't slouch, S-L-O-U-C-H, slouch. To slouch, to bring your shoulders in and your back down, don't slouch, sit up straight. Your mothers and your teachers were right. Sit up straight and life will be better. Isn't that amazing? Very interesting story. Somebody was asking about the URL. The URL, I'll read it really quickly, www.telegraph.co.uk. And you can just search for the story. It was January 31st story. The story title was Standing Straight Could Help Symptoms Depression study. Yeah, very interesting. Now, we had a lot of vocabulary words, a lot of words. So listen carefully here. Concluded. Concluded. You can spell this with me. Concluded. C-O-N-C-L-U-D-E-D. -E Concluded. Gave an answer. After researching a question to find the answer. Posture. Posture, P-O-S-T-U-R-E, the way a person stands or sits, down in the dumps, down in the dumps, to be depressed, to be blue, to be sad, worried, anxious. It's long been known, it has 
long been known. We've known for a long time. We've known something for a long time. Oh, by the way, down in the dumps, D-U-M-P-S. Somebody asked to explain the idiom. Mm, I do that on E-Cubed. So I'm going to tell you guys, go to my e -cubed channel to find the explanation of the dumps. Okay, it's a good one. It's a great expression. Confident, confident, C-O-N-F-I-D-E-N-T. To be confident means to be fearless, positive, hopeful, self-assured, to be really positive. Curious to know, curious to know, wanted to know, eager to know, curious, C-U-R-I-O-U-S. Suffering from depression, suffering, S-U-F-F-E-R, suffer, suffering from depression, D-E-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N. People who are depressed, people who are always sad, sad so much of the time, not always, but almost always, they're very sad, they have negative feelings, and many of these people who have depression, they take drugs, not illegal drugs, but the doctor gives them drugs to try and make them feel better. Participants, participants, P-A-R-T-I-C-I-P-A-N-T-S, participants, people who take part in a study, in this case, in a research study, okay, people who are in people who are being studied in this research. Self-focused. It's two words, but we join it with a hyphen. S-E-L-F, self-focused. Get that O sound, focused. F-O-C-U-S-E-D. Focusing on me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Me, 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 me. Mentally more sharp. Mentally, your mind, your brain, more sharp, S-H-A-R-P, smarter, you're smarter, you remember more, things are more accurate in your head. Less fatigued, fatigued, F-A-T-I-G-U-E-D, less tired, to have more endurance, okay? If you have less fatigue, you can work longer. You can do something for a longer period of time. And finally, more enthusiastic. Enthusiastic, E-N-T-H-U-S-I-A-S-T-I-C. To, uh, to have more positive feelings, more energetic, more energy to be happier. These are uh, the main words for this section. It's a great story. And uh, personally, I'm one of those people who's pretty positive. I'm pretty positive. And uh, I know when I shoot my videos and when I do my podcasts, I need to show you guys that I'm positive and English is fun. And I always, before I start shooting, I always remember to bring my shoulders back. And that does give me more energy. And I think people enjoy that stuff too. So that's the story. Feeling down, look up. Yeah, don't be looking down. Don't, you know, people when they're depressed and sad, they look down, they look at the ground, they look at their hands and stuff like that. Don't do that. Look up, have good posture. If you're feeling depressed, maybe you can change your feelings by changing your posture. If you think this is true, I would love to hear from you. You can leave a comment on our website. And once again, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash radio. We have a board down at the bottom where you can leave messages. I'd love to see your messages down there. That would be fantastic. Now, let me go ahead and read the story one more time. And I'm going to read it pretty fast. Good luck in listening. I think you guys will understand almost everything. You ready? Here we go. Feeling down? Look up. 
Researchers at the University of Auckland have concluded that posture may be keeping people down in the dumps. It's long been known that sitting and standing up properly makes positive people feel even stronger and more confident. So, researchers were curious to know if it would help with people who were already suffering from depression. It did. Participants in the study were found to be much less self-focused, mentally more sharp, less fatigued, and more enthusiastic. Your mom was right. Sit up straight. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. You got bad posture? I sometimes do. Did you know that bad posture not only can make you feel bad, it can give you headaches too. No joke. And it can give you tummy problems too. I'm serious. Bad posture makes you look older too. If you have frequent headaches and tummy aches, you might want to check out your posture. Maybe start doing some stretching on a daily basis just like me. Feel better and start looking younger. Yeehaw! Wow, interesting stuff. Good facts from Country Shane. Bad posture, it can make you feel bad, but it can also give you headaches. My goodness, I get those headaches sometimes. And it can give you tummy aches, tummy, stomach aches, stomach problems, digestive problems. Oh boy. And yeah, I have to agree. Uh, if you have bad posture, do you look young and strong? No, it makes you look older and nobody wants to look older, right? I don't think so. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Country Shane. I think it's time for a couple of questions, don't you? My first question is from Luis Aguilera Luna. How can I make an application essay? I'm from Mexico, but I have the chance to study in the United States for seven weeks. So I need to write an essay to the university and I'm not sure how to do that or how to start. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, Lewis. Of course, uh, if you go online, you might be able to find lots of examples, um, but keep it simple. I'm gonna give you the ideas for four paragraphs. You're gonna have to write the story yourself, but I think these four paragraphs might help you. Paragraph number one, say how much you want to join and why tell them oh i'm so excited to be able to join your program i really hope you choose me um, i would love to study the subject at your school and the area where you are is so beautiful i've been dreaming to go to america and this would be a wonderful opportunity for me something like that paragraph number two Tell them about you and your background, but not just your history. Tell them how your background has prepared you for their program. So something that you have been doing in order to prepare yourself for this opportunity to study in the United States. Paragraph number three, Tell them that you have researched their school and you have researched their study program and you have researched the community so that you're familiar with the town and, and the people and the things to do and that you want to see things and experience things. Tell them about that. And finally, the last paragraph, tell them that you promise to be a great student and a great friend to everyone there okay I think those four points if you concentrate on those I hope my fingers are crossed I hope that that will get you into that program Lewis and please let me know if it doesn't I'll be really sad but if it works 
I'll be really, really happy for you. Good luck with that one, Lewis. I have another question from Adele Oroz. I hope my pronunciation is okay. Adele says, sometimes when I hear, when I listen, the TH sound sounds like a D. But I guess it's different from a regular D, as in drum, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, the TH sound. Remember, there are two TH sounds. There's the aspirated or the non-vibrated sound. And then there's the vibrated sound. Both TH sounds require that the tip of your tongue go between your teeth, between the upper and lower teeth. And if your tongue is in the proper position, it's impossible really to make a D sound. Your TH might be short, but it shouldn't be a D sound. However, there are times when the TH is at the end of a word and the next word begins with a D. In that situation, you might not hear the TH. That is possible. In that case, you might only hear a D. Okay? So, for example, uh, with December, with December, with December, with December. If I said it really fast without thinking uh, uh, with December, I don't know. I can't think of a sentence. But in that type of a situation, yeah, you might not hear the TH very much. You might think you're hearing more of a D. However, I highly recommend to all of you, do not make your TH sound like a D. Okay, try to keep your TH as clean as possible. Um, do your best with the TH sound. Slow down. Perfect your pronunciation for speaking. It's so important. Sometimes the TH sound will sound like an F. So, yes, yeah, sometimes it, some people might pronounce the TH like a D. Some people might pronounce the TH like an F. Really, and that's kind of typical, uh, I'll be with you, I'll be with you. That's an F sound, it should be with you, okay? But again, it's not the correct pronunciation, okay? In some areas, in some dialects, in some communities, it's okay, it's very common. But for standard American pronunciation, keep your TH clean, don't make it sound like a D, don't make it sound like a, an F. Keep it either aspirated with or vibrated the. Okay? Keep those THs clean. What about the schwa sound? Okay. I'll give you an example for the schwa sound. So this question comes from Adriano Dantas, who's here on YouTube. Talk to us about the schwa sound. So, simply put, the schwa is an unaccented, an unstressed vowel. And it's like this. Uh, uh. That's it. However, I've been teaching English, gosh, for 30 years now. And my focus in teaching English is taking American pronunciation, real conversations, and teaching them to students. And what I have discovered is in America, depending on the person, depending on the situation, the schwa sound actually kind of has three variations. Um, and the variations are can be seen in the word electricity. Okay, so let's make it short. Electric. Electric. So perfect pronunciation of the word is electric, E-L-E-C-T-R-I-C, -E -E electric, electric. Now, in that three-syllable word, the second syllable is stressed. So it's electric, 
electric. In that situation, E isn't stressed. Therefore, we can change it to a schwa sound. So again, the typical dictionary schwa sound is uh. So we say electric, electric, electric. However, you will also hear Americans say electric, eh, eh, like a short I, eh, electric, electric, electric. And you will hear Americans use a short E, eh, eh, electric, electric, electric. So this uh, eh, eh, are all kind of variations of the schwa, the standard schwa pronunciation. It's an unstressed word or syllable, and it is uh. That's all you need to remember. If you're doing dictation, if you're listening to Americans, you might hear other variations. But for you, as an ESL student, just concentrate on that really lazy sound. Uh, uh, electric, electric, uh, uh. Sometimes it's so lazy, it's even difficult to hear. I hope I answered your question. I'll take another here from Choyab, Choyab Benslimen. How can I say the word opportunity? Okay, so it's it's not Ms. Coach Shane, it's just Coach Shane. <laughs> so the word is O-P-P-O-R-T-U-N-I-T-Y, opportunity. So it's not opportunity, no, no, no. Opportunity. Opportunity. That's the schwa. N -n -t. Opportunity. 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 Now, the perfect pronunciation opportunity. Opportunity. But most Americans are going to take the second T and flap it. Opportunity. Opportunity. Tunity, tunity, d, 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 and the flap T is very similar to a D sound. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity only knocks once. How many times does opportunity knock? I'm curious. One more question, and this is from Imia Familia, Imia Familia. <laughs> Um, how to pronounce in the and of the. Okay, and this is another thing that we focus on in DDM. DDM is my listening class. And if you have not received my listening lessons for free, I'll give you eight listening lessons. www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Get the lessons. They're free. In the. Perfect pronunciation is in the so let's say in the house in the house that's how you should say it americans however might change that pronunciation and what we learn in ddm is the n is a strong sound the th is a weak sound there are three strong sounds s n l there are three weak sounds d t and th and the N, the strong sounds, can kill the weak sounds. So in the becomes in the. Not in the, but in the. You gotta have a really long N. So if you spelled it phonetically, it would be like I N N U H. And actually, I prefer three Ns. I N N N U H in the in the car in the house in the house in the house that's how Americans will seemingly pronounce it that's not intentional that happens because of native speakers comfort in speaking okay so I do not suggest that you do that intentionally but for your listening skills it's good to know of the there's also another rule we have three words or suffixes of, of, the contraction have, apostrophe, ve, and the word have, h-a-v-e. 
These are very common in daily English. And when the word after begins with a consonant, many times we can cancel the V sound. So, kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. We can say of tired T is a strong consonant. We can cancel the V, so I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. The N is a strong sound. The D is a weak sound. We can cancel the D. I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. Americans will typically say, I'm kind of tired. You guys, when you're speaking English, I highly recommend that you try to say, I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. Keep your sounds as perfectly as possible. Let the cancellation happen naturally without thinking about it. Those are some great questions, and I want to thank everybody for those questions. And remember, everybody at home, you can send your questions to our YouTube channel, which is, you can find it on our website, letsmasterenglish.com slash TV, and then the Coach Shane's ESL YouTube channel. Also, if you join us live on Periscope or on YouTube, you can ask your questions there. Thanks a lot. ABC, the audio book club with me, Coach Shane. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is the book that we are currently listening to. Audio books are great. They're a big challenge to your listening ability, but what's really nice is you can read along with the book. So if you have the audiobook and the print book, it's perfect. And most of these books you can probably find at your library, which is really cool. Now, the audiobook you can get for free. Again, if you go to this site, www.audibletrial, audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. All right, you go there, you sign up, and they'll give you a book for free. Now, they're going to ask for lots of information, and they're going to want you to be a member. Well, <laughs> no problem. I'm a member, and every month... I pay $14.95 and I get to pick another audiobook. So I have a huge collection of audiobooks and I love it. I can listen to them again and again and again. I can listen when I'm walking, at work, when I'm washing dishes. It's fantastic and I have some great books. So again, the book that we are currently listening to is The Seven Habits of Highly effective people. I always say highly successful people. It's highly effective people. Now, uh, this week we're going to be discussing habit two, which actually begins, I think it's chapter 34, not 35, uh, chapter 34, audio chapter 34, and it is a long chapter. It goes for 20 chapters. It's just over two hours long. And um, this is actually a very important chapter. Chapter, the last week we, we had habit one, which talked about being proactive, learning how to control your responses, being response able, able to respond. And this is habit two. And I gave you an assignment. The assignment was when you die, what do you want people to say about you? What do you want people to remember about you? And those people would be your family, your friends, your co-workers, and somebody from the community, like a church member or something like that. So one member of your family, one of your friends, one of your co-workers, one member from your church or other you know, somebody in the community, what would they say about you 
end your life. Mm, if you died today, what would those people say? That's the essence of the chapter. Begin with the end in mind. When you start something, when you do something, think about the end. As you start something, think about the end. And what does that mean, the end? Well, in life, it means your life. So, think about the things that you do, how they will affect your life. Are they productive for your life? He talks about this concept of begin with the end in mind. And he gives an example of building a house. If you want to build a house, well, first of all, you have to design it to see what it is that you want. You create this image on paper and you see the finished image and then you start building the house. You begin with the end in mind. You have a family and you have children and you want your children to be very productive, positive, wonderful people in the world. That is the end. That is what you want. So for that goal, how do you begin? You have to make a plan. You have to think about how you're going to interact with your children. This is the idea of beginning with the end in mind. So it's, it's a great chapter and it's very descriptive and they talk about many, many, many different things. One of the most important things in this chapter is to develop a personal mission statement. And he gives two examples, one from a man and one from a woman. And since I'm a guy, I'll cover some of the guy's mission statements. These uh, personal mission statements, they're like a constitution. A constitution is the set of laws for a country. And when a country creates its constitution, it doesn't change. They add things to the Constitution, but the main laws of the Constitution don't change. So when you create your personal mission statement, the reason for your life, how you are going to live, these need to be laws that will not change. Even when you get older, they're going to be the same. Yes, they might change slightly. You might need to add something. But basically, these are laws that should not change. So for the guy's example, some of the mission statements, the personal mission statements were succeed at home first. Mm, that's good. Be successful at home. This is a personal mission statement. So when this guy wakes up in the morning, if he looks at his personal mission statement, one of the first things he will read is succeed at home first. So every day when this guy starts and he sees that, what is he going to do? He's probably going to do something nice for his family. Maybe get breakfast ready, maybe wake up the kids, maybe make some coffee for everybody. Uh, maybe clean the dishes. I don't know, whatever. You know, the guy's going to probably do something good for his family, with his family in mind. Another one of his mission statements, and he has many, 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 many. Another one was develop one new proficiency a year. I like that one. That means create and develop a new ability every year. So maybe it's uh, exercise, maybe it's learning a style of exercise, uh, learning a language, a third language, or a fourth language. He doesn't need to be a professional in the language, just proficient, a satisfactory level, learning something new, learning a new sport. Yeah, those are learning, a, a, starting a new hobby. Develop one new proficiency a year. Wouldn't that be great? I think that's a really great idea. 
right after that he says plan tomorrow's work today yeah have a plan on what you're doing we all kind of know what we want to do and at work we're pretty organized we have to be uh, hopefully with school you're pretty organized but even in your personal life too plan ahead think about things that you can do with your family with your friends with your community plan ahead keep these plans uh, active and plan ahead one thing that's really important if you look at these personal mission statements they go back to the first habit remember be proactive think about and react to and be ready for things in your circle of influence do you remember that so if we worry about Donald Trump can we do anything no we can't Donald Trump is outside our circle of influence but something like our wives cooking or something like that we may be able to influence a bit so these personal mission statement points are it's very important to remember these need to be within your circle of influence you shouldn't be making any laws to live by regarding Donald Trump or the government or science or something like that no 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 these need to be things that you can control that are within your circle of influence it's very important there's a huge list of these examples and this is the type of assignment making a personal mission statement that you start today but you're not gonna finish for a couple weeks it's something that you should start and in the morning think about it at lunchtime think about it just take a couple minutes think about your personal mission statement and write one add one think about it add another after a couple of weeks you'll probably have at least 10 things in your personal mission statement and then you need to analyze those things are these really things that you believe and that will not change throughout your life succeeding at home first do you really believe that is that a law you want to follow develop one new proficiency a year really is that a law that you want to follow is that something you really want to do plan tomorrow's work today are you really going to do that listen twice as much as you speak if you agree that these are absolute truths that you want to do this that these things will create a better life for you and the people around you then they become your personal mission statement these things should never change you might add to them but these are core principles these are laws in your life that will never change and that's so important these principles must come from your center of influence this can be very confusing stuff so it's something that I really recommend that you listen to again that you listen to the examples of the guy's uh, mission statement and of the woman's mission statement it's important that you listen to a guy guys should listen to a guy women should listen to a woman they're different perspectives and the feelings are different but they're all based on core principles these are things in your life inside you that will not change that are a part of you it's not what other people think or what other people expect of you it's of you the chapter is filled with examples of how people might make mistakes in writing their mission statement some people might want to focus on their spouse 
on their husband or their wife. But that can be problematic. That can cause problems. Because as you know, couples will argue. There's always trouble in a marriage. One person may be very emotional. The other person may not be emotional. There, there are many, many, many factors in that. So a spouse-centered uh, rule is a good idea, but unfortunately, it makes people vulnerable to the other person. You become controlled or overly focused on controlling the other person, and that will affect your mood. So instead of being spouse-centered, be family centered. And this actually can change your perspective. Because if you think about family, what is family? And if you design your life to create a good family, well, what role does everybody have? Well, the only person you can affect is you. So you as a husband, what can you do? What should a husband do? Now, your wife needs to understand, of course, what you believe a husband should do. And she might argue and you could negotiate, but she should understand that your goal in life is to be a good husband and you will do the things required to be a good husband. If you're a father, well, now you've got two jobs. You're a husband and a father. And you're a son and you're a brother and you're an uncle. So you have many roles within the family. So instead of focusing on your wife, which I know it sounds like a great idea. In reality, it's probably better to focus on you, not your wife, but you as the husband. People who focus on money, you know, that sounds important, especially when we're younger. We want to make a lot of money so that we can create income and opportunities for our family. However, if somebody is overly focused on money, what happens if their company, you know, closes or the economy goes bad or the investment, hap uh, something happens to the investment? Uh, you buy a house and the house uh, burns down. What happens if that person is overly focused on money then in these situations of disaster? The person loses all of their focus. At the same time, when the person is overly focused on money, are they thinking about family? Are they thinking about friends? Are they thinking about community? No. But the person, when they're focused on money, they say, no, 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 I am thinking because I need to make money to help my family. I need to make money to entertain my friends. I need to make money to help my community. Yeah, we understand that, but that is probably not going to happen. It might happen if you're lucky, but what happens when there's disaster? Then what do you have? Your family has been waiting and waiting and waiting, and then you come to them with nothing. What are they going to think? Yeah, focusing on money is probably going to do more damage to your relationships than help. So these are just two examples. You know, once again, a lot of people, when they write their mission statement, they, they say something, I'm going to be the, uh, uh, the uh, focus on my wife. I'm going to treat my wife like a queen, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make lots of money for the family and we're going to have a beautiful house and I'm going to send my kids to a good school, blah, blah, blah. But that's wrong. That's not right. Those are things that you think other people expect. You need to focus on you. I know it sounds almost greedy, but that's the idea. It's not easy. Habit number two, again, is a long habit. It's two hours. I encourage you, again, if you have the book, read the book and listen to the audio. I have both. And um, I listen to it, and then I come back and look at the book. 
The book has nice charts and pictures. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. From, from now on, from this point, think about it. If you died tomorrow, what would your family say about you? What would your friends say about you? What would your coworkers say about you? What would your community say about you? Now, hopefully we're not going to die tomorrow. So as we continue down the road of our life, what things can we influence? And what things can we do to create a better life for me and everyone around me? What can I do? My personal mission statement. That's the idea. Well, it's a, it's a great chapter. It's a very important chapter. And to be honest, this type of chapter probably requires a couple of weeks to talk about it. And I hope that you do spend some time with this book, at least during this next week, and look at it carefully and start writing your own personal mission statement. It's very important. If you want to be a highly effective person, this is one of the things that you can do. I've read many, 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 many books on personal development, on success, on business success, on family success, and all of the books have a chapter like this, where you need to sit down and you need to think about who you are, where you want to go, and what the ultimate goal is. Then you need to sit down and make a plan. How are you going to go there? It's all the same. And this book right here, The Seven Habits, is one of the fathers of this personal development area. So it's a great book. It's a great chapter. Please take your time with Habit 2. Begin with the end in mind. Now, next week, we are going to move on. Next week will be Habit Three, which is put first things first. Put first things first. This is also a very important chapter, so important that Stephen Covey, the doctor who wrote this book, actually wrote another book called Putting First Things First. This chapter begins at audio chapter 54 and ends at audio chapter 67. It's about an hour and 22 minutes long, so it's much shorter than Habit 2. Uh, but Habit 3, again, is put first things first. That is what I want you to listen to. It's Again, it's about 80 minutes, so 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day is all you need to listen to. Good luck. Don't forget, you can get this audiobook for free at uh, audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. All right. Keep listening. Keep learning. And we'll talk again next week. And now the end is near. Yep, it's time to go, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the Let's Master English podcast. I want you guys to participate if you like the audio book club and if you want to share something, if you have a question, if you want to share your personal statement, for example, or if you have a question about habit three, put first things first, please send us an email podcast at letsmasterenglish.com. If you have any questions about uh, this podcast or what we're going to do or what we're doing, what's going on, again, send us an email, podcast at letsmasterenglish.com. Remember, we have 11 free lessons. I want you to get them. If you're intermediate level and above, you should absolutely have these lessons. You can get them www.letsmasterenglish.com slash free. Sign up, get the lessons, eight listening lessons and three speaking lessons. Also, on Tuesdays, 
usually, we send out a newsletter with some great pictures and some English pointers. So I want you to get that newsletter too. And of course, if we have a special sale on my classes, I don't think there is any right now, um, you can get that special discount and sign up for the classes too. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a fantastic week again. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And together, let's master English.